Cool. So welcome. Welcome, everyone. This is um, edition. I don't even know which edition we are in anymore. Uh, but well, this is Pi Data Dublin Remote Summer Meetup. Um, welcome, everyone. I have you with me today, um, Chuck Ting Ho uh, and Lorena Ballen. So our speakers for today. How are you guys? I'm good. I'm very good. I'm in a park, uh, in a virtual park, so <laughs> that is full of people, that's not so safe, uh, but it's virtual, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, social distancing then, right, absolutely. And how are you today, Lorena? I'm great, thank you. I'm excited for this. Oh, good, good, perfect. So with no further delay then, uh, let's start with Chuck. So Chuck Ting Ho has a physics background from the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. Uh, she has tra transferred her analytical and logical skills in natural science and built a career in data science. Now she works as a developer advocate for Terminus DB and streamer on Twitch. Her passion for open source and community provided a solid route to the Python sphere. A member of the PSF, She'll be explaining NLP use on chatbots to us today. Welcome, Chuck. Right, thank you so much, Lace. I would, uh, first of all, share my screen uh, because that's uh, what everybody wants to look at. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, by the way, this is a talk that, uh, you know, um, it's about chatbot. First of all, and uh, the, the slice link is there if you're interested, because uh, at the end of this talk, there will be like lots of references. And um, because this is a topic that I think uh, it could uh, maybe like uh, could spend a whole semester to, to dig deep down. So uh, obviously we don't have time today to dig so deep. So I would just briefly go through, you know, all, the, all, all these introductions. And, um, and if you're interested, uh, go through those uh, references and um, and also uh, shameless plug. I also uh, stream on Twitch as well. Uh, every um, you know, well, I've, I've quite a few programs, so some of them will be like I've I've done a, a program with Lace uh, Wednesday at lunchtime at one. Also Sunday I have a, a tutorial for Python, and also uh, today I just you know did one uh, for data science, uh, which is you know at five p.m. UK time. So if you're interested, uh, go to my Twitch. You will see uh, my broadcasting uh, schedule there. And hopefully you find my uh, tutorial interesting. So um, yeah, I'm Chuck. So uh, Lace already gave a brilliant uh, introduction of me, so I won't go uh, too much. Uh, now I work for TerminusDB. We are open source graph database. So um, actually, graph database become more and more important nowadays. And uh, even in this talk, uh, you would see that in NLP is also something uh, you know that uh, is very popular. That you know a lot of things are represented in graphs. So having graph database is very uh, it's super important and we open source, so yay. And um, yeah, uh, also, you know, I involve in a lot of uh, organization. Uh, some of them is with Lace, <laughs> which is amazing. Um, so yeah, uh, also I want people to join more sprints because uh, contributing to open source is fun. So, and of course, go to my Twitch. <laughs> and so that's it about me. And I want to start really talking about the chatbot. So um, so first of all, uh, how chatbot work. Uh, so. Um, by the way, like if I miss your chat, I'm sorry because I have too many things on my screen right now. So if there's anything, I think Lace could uh, could pass on the questions to me. Um, but anyway, uh, so and uh, you know, uh, so chatbot, you know, uh, to to be able like for. You know, because conversation is something like very freestyle, right? Because, um, you know, instead of having, you know, buttons, that is a set options that, you know, the user would press. So it's very deterministic, like what a user want. And uh, a sentence could be a very freestyle and uh, to be able for a machine to understand is quite a challenge. So uh, there's actually like, uh, for example, there's like two two things in, in the you know, NLP kind of chatbot world, we have like certain terminologies there. So uh, for example, users message uh, utterance, like I don't use that term that much actually. So I would just say like users message. So it's kind of like an input. So when you send a message to a chatbot, then the ch first of all, the chatbot need to understand um, what you actually means and what kind of action do you want? Uh, what type, you know, because 
what the chatbot could do is like the chatbot can't react to your message in a million millions of ways because uh, the reaction from the chatbot usually is hard coded in here i'm talking about a chatbot that is designed for commercial use as you know uh, it could be an application in your you know uh, maybe uh, your your bank's uh, customer service for example uh, so it it is not a chatbot that built your parts the Turing test. So it won't give you a million millions, you know, response according to your 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 utterance or your message. So so first, first of all, the chatbot need to categorize like what kind of actions should I take uh, when the user give me this uh, message. So that's the intent. So a uh, chatbot need to identify what intents a user has. So the second thing is that in the message there are useful information that um, a chatbot need to extract. Um, you see some example in the next slides, but uh, so they, they are entities. So um, their information provided by the user that is useful. Well, of course, the user could chat about something else that's not useful, but this I'm talking about here are the useful informations. So, for example, uh, a, a, you know, a, a chatbot message is that, you know, uh, it's a message that I talk to a chatbot. Hi, I'm Chuck. So, first of all, the chatbot will identify this, uh, this message as a greeting message. So, it's not something else. It's not that, you know, I want to buy a, a, a coffee or it's not that I want to order a cake. It's that I am saying, Hello. So um, a chatbot knows that what, what action to, to to take after that. Maybe greeting back. You know, maybe say hello to me as well, or ask me what do I need help. Um, so a chatbot would have a, a certain set of action to take after identifying the intent of these questions. And entities could be, you know, uh, it could be useful to know, know the name of the user, so it extracts that. Okay, it kind of maybe. Uh, there are different ways to extract entities. So maybe in this case, uh, see that you know there's a, a word that is capitalized. So that may be the user's name. So that would be the name. Uh, for example, that's a very very um, simple 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 um, example here. Uh, another example that could be more commercial is that, uh, for example, the message is book a flight to Hong Kong on 8th of December 2020. So uh, it's a flight booking. It's not something else. It's not canceling a booking. It's not you know um, asking for uh, you know back package information or things like that. Um, so it's a it's booking, and then the useful information would be destination. It's Hong Kong. It's not you know. Um, so this time it's more complicated. It may also have to look at the the, the other words in the sentence. So it's a flight flight to. So that's the destination. That's not where I'm flying from. Right, and the date, uh, of course. Uh, it, Maybe again, it could be some recx or something to uh, to find the date. Actually, a lot of date parser could already do that. You know, uh, according to some rules, some set rules. That's very simple. It's not machine learning. That's not very smart, but it's just fine. It, it could extract the date. Um, so uh, that's uh, that's some example. And so now you can already see that there's two biggest challenge here: how to categorize the intent correctly. So the chatbot will take the right action. For example, in this case, then maybe the chatbot will look for the flight for me and you know give back the information about the possible flight or possible route. Um, another thing is to get the information. If the chatbot doesn't get the right information, it doesn't know where I'm flying to, when I'm flying, and or maybe the chatbot could see that now I'm missing one piece of information, so where I'm flying from. So the chatbot could follow up and ask a question. That's something that's also very difficult and need to uh, need you know quite a good uh, you know uh, AI to do it. So um, so uh, the AI that I refer to actually like uh, is the NLU inside a chatbot. So um, NLU is a natural language unit. So this uh, natural language unit unit of course use the uh, natural language processing uh, natural language algorithms to uh, to finish the task that I mentioned before. So um, there. Are Actually, like because NLP is a, is a subject that has been there for decades. It's like you know, it's like machine learning or it's like a uh, neural network that has been there for a long time. Now it's coming to the spotlight because uh, now there's some uh, you know more accurate results because uh, the processing power of the computer is much better. We can handle more data, so the training is better. Um, so yeah, now it's become something that you know everybody wants wants to talk about. Before it could be a subject that like if you study your let's say your master or your PhD, you may study, but uh, but now it's like everybody wants to want to be an expert in it. So um yeah, so it's a 
well, first of all, I have already mentioned a little bit about these two tasks, categorizing the, 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 um, the intent. So uh, one way to, to approach that is to find a way to vectorize the words in the sentence. So by doing that, then you have a way to mathematically compare all these different sentences and, uh, and know how to, uh, how to categorize them. Because once you have a mathematical representation, then you can, you can group them. You can you know, use a support vector machine or other algorithms to get similarities in, in the, in the, for, of the vectors uh, to actually group a uh, you know, sentence that you know, carry similar meanings together. So um, that's one, one challenge uh, or, or one approach to the problem. Um, the other thing is that uh, to extract the entity. So uh, there is a, 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 a lot of research done in this uh, name entity recognition and ER here. And uh, at the beginning of, of, of this, you know, um, pe people just use handwritten rules. So it's like I said, for example, that, uh, you know, the, the, the date time parser could maybe just check whether the number you represent actually can pass into a time. And it, is this structure like a, in an in a understandable way, for example, this, because like for days, for days, you know, it's, it's a, there's a limited uh, combination. So you could actually handwritten all the rules to check. For example, a month, you can have like, you know, uh, you only have 12 months and you only, have, like in English at least, like, you know, uh, and you only need to check, you know, um, whether, you know, those uh, those characters that uh, suit into the spelling of the month or the, the uh, abbreviation of the month. And then maybe like, so eighth, you know, so that, if that makes sense, like you can't have 35, right? Or you can't have like 68, so you can only have, you know, uh, a max 31 days in, in a month. So, so it's, it's, a, it's a very, you know, uh, easy uh, task to, to use handwritten rules. Uh, but for other tasks, it's not that easy. For example, like, capturing a name well you can tr try to guess by having the capitalization but it could be a name of a person it could be a name of a building it could be a name of a, of an event it could be a name of a book it could be anything else so um so that that would be more difficult to use these handwritten rules uh, to, to 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 finish this task um so now uh, since i uh, already talk about we now have like stronger processing power you know storing data is much cheaper it's easier to get information to to uh, to use as an example so uh now because of the blooming of data uh, data science and machine learning we can use a statistical model plus uh, some supervised uh, machine learning algorithm to, to achieve this task so this is uh, something that i think is uh, mo most common now um what is state of the art at the moment is to try to uh, you know, lower the, no the number of uh, uh, you, you need to uh, train your model. So uh, because, you know, uh, well, now we have a lot of good uh, pre-trained model in the world. You know, Stanford University have these like Glovac, for example, then they train on a large, large corpus, but uh, the corpus that they train on is kind of like general purpose. So uh, it could be, you know, I'm just making it up. So it could be, you know, all, all, the, all the articles in Wikipedia, or it could be all the articles in the news. So it's kind of like general purpose and sometimes it's not what you want. If you, for example, if you have an application that is talk to your, your, um, your bank, uh, bank, you know, customers, then, you know, that's all the terms that you use actually related to banking. So it's, it's not uh, well, using those corporates, uh, you know, uh, if you use a model that's trained by those corporates may not really serve the purpose and it could, even like, you know, because balance could mean something else, right? Balance could mean, you know, how much money you have in the bank or balance could mean like whether you can balance on a bike, you know, uh, it's, it's different things. So, um, so you, so the idea is to have, you know, uh, as, as less uh, requirement of the training data as, as possible. So, um, so that's why all these like uh, unsupervised uh, machine learning and semi-supervised machine learning is coming from. And uh, we, we'll, we'll have a deeper look uh, in, afterwards. So um, first of all, so um, to vectorize uh, the word, so they're, they're, they're actually like a quite standard approach to do it. Now there's quite actually quite a few different ways to approach it. Uh, one of these is, is a word embedding. So you can see word embedding is, is famous by this example here, because like uh, the vector actually create, uh, carry the content of the word. So you can have a vector that's king, and then you can do a you know some vector like operations like mathematical vector operations to like in these vector space so you're like king minus man plus woman will be queen so you can perform mathematical calculation on the context of the word this is like crazy this is people's like craving for then if because machine is it's all about mathematics it's all about numbers so if 
can you know um, you know factorize the word then like even like with the meaning itself so then you could let the machine to talk to a human that that's that's uh, that's the idea of it um, and there's also other approaches you know um, to to achieve that there, there are like back of words that's more like a statistical model uh, sometimes called ngram uh, well n could be anything like you could have bigram you can have trigram but ngram just mean generally the approach is to look at the, the occurrences of the word um, so you can see that you know uh, that you've, you've in a sentence so you try to uh, understand the meaning of the word by seeing what this word is uh, is appearing with so for example like if um, if uh, you know uh, let's say I made a potato salad and I made a fruit salad so you know that potato and fruit are uh, something that could it's edible right because it's also appear with the with salad so once you understand salad then you understand that anything that appear with it may is is edible at least so um so that that's the idea of it and uh work to vac is uh, is kind of uh, uh, is is well it's another approach i would say uh is is uh, using the new network um so that's why it's uh, it's more modern kind of way because it's using new network it's pre-trained um it's trained on a large corpus and it's kind of uh, also because it's a pre-trained model is uh, to get a fixed dimension and it's quite a high dimension so if you're using that uh, with your uh, you know if you for example if your uh, your task is involved with a uh, deep learning you know neural network then Maybe you want to use the vector back as your uh, one of your first layers to you know embed the, embed your input uh, which which are sentences. Then uh, you may have to do some uh, dimensional reduction in your network to uh, to, to able to do that. Um, the other way of doing that is Glovac. So Glovac uh, is is interestingly is unsupervised learning. Uh, it's actually look at the co-occurrences of the word. Um, so. You don't have to label your data. You don't have to label that. You know, um, for example, if you train work to bag, at least you have to label. Oh, this is a fruit, or like you know, things like that. But Glovac doesn't like you. Just you know, look at all the corpus. What works, uh, what words uh, appear with each other. So it's kind of like Glovac is kind of like using back of word idea to to do that. And I think it's a it's, it's a Stanford University's uh, you know um, model that you could download and use. So um, yep. And uh, supervised learning approaches, and uh, well, like once you have all these like label data, then you could uh, you could actually have uh, you know more more machine learning algorithms to to work with. And uh, for example, you have like uh, uh, in NLTK and and SpaceD, actually, um, you know, SpaceD has all SpaceD. By the way, like uh, I hope you have heard about that. So SpaceD is a is tool that you know uh, can let you, uh, you know, run on. Let's say if you're in sentence, they will check all the part of speech for you, and also you could also uh, you know recognize some entity. So they they have these like a uh, large you know uh, corpus that you know they have uh, trained on. They have um, this entity links uh, that you know uh, is kind of also because you know it uses some of the parts of speech thing but uh, I, I won't go into detail you can have a look at like how their uh, the algorithm works um, other ways to do it is to uh, use you know uh, these statistical methods like hidden Markov model um, decision trees sometimes and support vector machine like I said if you have vectorized then you can use a factor machine uh, CRF which is uh, something I found it very cool is uh, actually like uh, something like a probabilistic graph model so um, it's really involved traversing the graph so it's kind of like a Markov chain but it's uh, is using something that's different like adding some conditions uh, I, I think I have a picture here uh, well I will show the, the picture afterwards when I talk about that so um, and then we have these uh, unsupervised learning approaches that uh, again is you know is look at the co co occurrence of the word this is kind of the way of to go if you're doing unsupervised uh, learning because if your if your data is not labeled then uh, you have to look at what the way to extract the information is to look at what words it appear with uh, so far it's not very accurate it's not very favorable it's not as uh, you know as popular as the semi supervised learning approaches so the semi supervised learning approaches uh, actually is kind of in between. So it still needs some tech, uh, you know, some some uh, labeled data. Uh, start with a small supervised set, but uh, so it's, it's used as a seed. But uh, afterwards, then doing the training process, that it could actually um, 
uh, refine itself. So it kind of, uh, you know, you don't need that much documents and, you know, that you could, you know, uh, it could also de decrease the, the tagging time. So you don't have to tag all your, you know, um, all your training corpus, which is, which is, that's why I like who really want this. Um, there are some papers about it. I came across it when I was doing research for this uh, slice. Uh, it's quite interesting, have a look. And other thing I want to talk about are Elmo's and Bart. Uh, they, they sound very cute. Uh, they they remind me of Sesame Street, uh, Street but um, actually it's, it's, it's algorithm that is uh, developed by Google. So the Google's research team has uh, done this and um, they also use some uh, kind of, you know, a cool, you know, uh, a deep learning, um, approaches, which uh, I would talk a little bit more. So, and uh, so conditional random views. So um, I, I'm i quite interested in looking deeper in this, but uh, like I said, like there's a time limit, so I won't be able to cover all of them. So it's a statistical model, so it involves some, um, you know, it's, it's a probabilistic graph model. So it, like, so it's kind of like, you know, this is, na uh, you, you see on picture, there's a naive Bayesian there, that you know, uh, you have different probabilities to you know uh, go go to different uh, outcomes. But uh, well, if you have a sequence, you have these like uh, hidden Markov chain models. So Markov chain is that you know you go from one possibility to the other, and you only like you know can jump from node to node. So you can see it's like this. So, but it's a sequence. It's quite interesting. And then uh, if you add some condition on it, it becomes this linear chain. Uh, you know, conditional random fields. So uh, the advantage of it is that it will overcome the label bias, but well, this is quite kind of uh, complicated. I think uh, I found a, a course that kind of, uh, that there are some lecture looks, talk, <laughs> lecture looks talking about that. So I think, yeah, you could, you could look, uh, talk about this like for the whole semester. <laughs> and um, so I won't be able to, to go through this, but I do include a link at the end. So uh, hopefully you, if you're interested, you can have a look how it kind of traverse the graph and have that like, uh, you know, sequential um, outcome there. And um, another approach, uh, canonical correlation analysis. So this is, again, it's like looking at, uh, you know, in a big corpus, how, you know, the relationship of the two variables that uh, are related and how is the, 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 the data itself is related to each other within the set. So. Um, I think this is something that is used in uh, in also other um, other machine learning approaches as well, not just in NLP. So basically, just look at how things are correlated, and um, yeah. So this is kind of like more like a, a unsupervised approach, and um, recurrent network. So a recurrent neural network is uh, is you know kind of uh, drawing a lot of attention um, because it's it's work surprisingly well, like all other deep learning stuff. And um, so uh, assuming you know what is an ANN, artificial neural network that you know, um, with when, so you have some input data that uh, is labeled. So um, you, you have a network, so a network of neurons and actually they are just weight. So they would, uh, when your input data is coming in, so it would carry all these like uh, matrix, uh, uh, you know, calculations and then, uh, it would come up with a uh, prediction and it compare with the, the label and it kind of like adjusts itself to low, to minimize the error by, you know, uh, you know, going through a feedback, you know, um, a back, back propagation and it adjusts the weight. So a new network is just a bunch of weights, weight. Okay. So uh, what makes a recurrent new networks different from just a artificial new network is that it handles the sequential data. So when you, uh, during the training. So when you input your data, of course, it will give a prediction, uh, but this prediction will be also used uh, to feedback uh, as an input in the next training data. So all your data is supposed to be sequential data. So the sequence does matter. You can't do a random shuffle of your data and give the same results because the sequence does matter. So it applies to sentence because the sentence you can shuffle all the words. Uh, it won't make sense. Uh, so uh, it's a sequential data, and it's using this the recurrent neural network uh, to to you know uh, to basically get some information from this uh, sequence. You know, uh, if your sequence matter, then there's some information in in this sequence that uh, you know is is kind of useful. Um, so uh, two famous one, uh, two popular design would be the gated unit, uh, gated recurrent unit, so GRU and RSTM. So basically they are very similar. It's just that uh, within, you know, uh, the, the neuron itself, it, um, within the neuron itself, it doesn't, um, it 
it, the, the gauge that you know I will talk about gauge a little bit later so the gauge the design of the gauge how to pro, like how how they are you know um, the architecture of it is, is is a bit different but I will use RSTM as an example to do some explanation later hopefully it makes sense uh, they could be also bi-directional so you will see later actually Elmo is bi-directional so like I said you know it's sequence you know you can have the next one and then put and train you can go also go the other direction so you could change your data like in a backward direction um so which is uh, insane and, and that's why elmo is uh, so cool because it's used by directional um you know uh, training um, so long short-term memory so long short-term memory is uh, well of course a recurrent neural network because uh, what you get from one uh, from this you know when you train your first data in you know your first word and you, you have a result from this neuron you put it back you know uh, into the next uh, when you train your next neuron you uh, put it back there um, so but the thing is like got all this gauge inside so all this gauge is actually just you know a vector of zeros and ones uh, oh no sorry it's like a, a vector of weight actually so this uh, vector of weight actually is uh, is it could be trained uh, during the, the training as well so these are like so it's just like instead of having just a one number as your weight or one vector as your weight, you have uh, a different gauge also as your weight. And uh, and during training, you know, um, it also this gauge actually uh, would uh, be actually uh, controlling what um, what information got flow into you know got, got flew. So it would be used as the next step training. Uh, some of them would be forgotten, so it it just becomes zero and got discarded. So um, so that's why it's called long short-term memory. So you have things that you remember, some things that you will forget. It's kind of like how my brain looks because I well, I always forget things anyway. So I have a very well, I have a very short short-term memory, but uh, this one is long because you know you're chaining a lot of them together to have a large sequence. So it's a long short-term memory. Um, so yeah, this is all the math. You can uh, dig deeper. I I won't go through them. And uh, Elmo is actually uh is 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 a one that you know is is bi-directional RSTM. So you can see that it go forward, it train like that. It also have another things like kind of, I think I do believe they train in parallel. So uh, you also have these like going backward to train. So for each for each time you, you train two directions. So um, so like the advantage is that you could, you don't need that much information. So that's like, this is like semi-supervised learning. So you don't need that, that many data um, to, to train it. Um, that you know, you know, you don't have to label so many data, or don't have to have such a big uh, data set. But the the downside is that because of these, like it's very strange, you know, two directional thing that every time you train, you have to train both both direction, are uh, sometimes not favorable because uh, when you set up your model, for example, let's say you set it up in uh, TensorFlow or set it up in uh, PyTorch, uh, then it's kind of a challenge to do that bidirectional thing. I think in uh, in Keras you can do bidirectional, but I think uh, there's some reason that it's, it's, uh, some, some, it's not favorable, that people don't like it. So um, they have this part, which kind of um, trying to uh, also do something that, uh, try to carry some information from the end of the sentence when you train. So it's not just one direction, but um, what you try to do is try to mask some of the words from your sentence when you train. So it's kind of, you can also see be beyond what's going on so uh 50 percent but like not everything beyond you can see but it's like 50 percent of them will be masked uh, but you still can get some insight from what's at the end of the sentence which is very interesting because um when i talk like talk about this with my colleague and they said that actually in some languages you know that the sentence only makes sense when you come to the end because the information is carried at the end <laughs> so i think that's why you know it, it, it makes so much sense when it, you do bidirectional thing or when you do barge which you know, the whole sentence will, will be input, but uh, some of them is mask. Um, so yeah, I think uh, I still have some time to uh, to talk about, you know, um, go back to, you know, the title, uh, why chatbot is so bad, why 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 they fail? Um, well, because it's, it's a very, very, very difficult task. Um, so uh, there is actually a very nice blog post, uh, blog post talk about that. It, it kind of mentioned that, well, is the, all these things is difficult for chatbot for example like um, the meaning of each word is so difficult to to understand because a word can carry multiple meanings uh, well and also you know there's the sentence structure 
because like for like language like English, you know, the, 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 the structure matters, right? Because you can have, you know, uh, I hit you and you hit me. It could be totally different because like one of them, I would have a, 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 a black eye. One of them, you will have a black eye. So it's different, right? So um, yeah, I do care about the, the orders in that sense. And, um, you know, so the meaning of the sentence itself, sometimes, you know, when you're in the middle of a conversation, you refer something back, you know, two minutes ago then like well then, then now you it's like the meaning of the sentence need, you know the, this context of the sentence actually is uh, is actually not in the sentence itself which is super difficult so um yeah so to to to, to, to make it like in a short shorter way to say it you know to conclude that's like have you ever jumped in the middle of a conversation especially nowadays like you know because we are in kind of like a social distancing and many conversations that carry on on the internet on the chat you see that when you see one message that let's say um you have a lot of you know different uh you know uh, chat chat group or i don't know how you call that even in a whatsapp group right it's a group with uh, with a bunch of people you see one message always oh, interesting but you don't totally understand what it's talking about you have to scroll up to see what was spoken before what was talked before then you know well if it's difficult for you it's even more difficult for, for a machine <laughs> and um so it's super difficult to understand people are so unpredictable like you know there's also all these slang and jargons that basically come out of people's creativity and um you know and there are a lot of info meaning you could be you know quoting something from a funny movie or coding something from you know uh, Monty Python, you know only only the, the Python community understand because we all love uh, Monty Python, you know, and the younger kids won't understand because they haven't seen Monty Python. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, it's it's actually difficult, and the context is sometimes is really hidden. Even you know us as a human, we mis misunderstand people a lot as well. So, um, so what we can do what like okay there are lots of limitations of what we can do at the moment so well first of all if you design a chatbot uh keep the, like keep to have like uh, the intent in your mind like you are not getting a chatbot to pass the turing test it doesn't need to deal with million millions of things it only needs to a certain set of things for example a a you know a app for the bank you know a uh, chatbot app for the bank that deal with the customers well, maybe the customer only can talk to you about, you know, uh, checking the balance, you know, transferring the money, closing the, the account, uh, or report a missing card or a fort, you know. There's limited things. And try to uh, focus on those choices to, like, for example, checking the balance. How could you identify this intent uh, the best? rather than spending effort to deal with other stuff. But the other stuff that you don't care, maybe you have to have a fallback mechanism to guide the user back to talk about things that you care. Um, so it's totally okay to say, sorry, I don't understand, but be, be, be nicer, not just sorry, I don't understand, but you know, uh, sorry, I don't understand. Can we talk about your balance, for example, like to, to, uh, to guide the user back into it rather than just like, well, I gave up, I don't understand, you know. Um, also, uh, because like I said, data are very important. We need lots of data, uh, especially when, you know, when you build a new chat, brand new chatbot, uh, you, you actually you try to guess what, you know, people in the real world will talk, but, or your user will, will speak to a chatbot, but uh, sometimes it's, it's not what you expect. So um, collect users data. I know there's like some privacy rules and stuff, but, uh, you know, make sure that you, at, at some level, you collect the data, maybe anonymize some, or you know, um, or get the consensus, get the data, and retrain your bot. Uh, that's very important. Um, so these are the reference. So I, I hope you get the slides. I will put the link uh, in the chat afterwards. But uh, these are all the reference that all the things that I read when I prepared this uh, this slide deck. Um, definitely go there and uh, see any topics that you're interested in. Uh, have a read. And um, and yeah, that's that's it for my talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Super cool. Well, I learned a lot about chatbots. Um, let's see. Anyone has a question? Well, um, Mr. Nolan is saying thank you, Chuck. The links are great. Uh, the talk was great as well. Thank you. Let's see if anyone has any questions. I actually have a question for you. It, it might be a, a stupid one, but um, so you you're talking about uh, the different models, uh, the different and the different um, 
the different models and the different languages. So uh, the question it came to my mind was if you if you're training a chatbot, let's say a business chatbot for a website, let's say they sell, I don't know, it's they sell clothing. Um, would the chatbot, would the model that is used to be trained the chatbot in English be the same one as if you're training the chatbot to speak, let's say, Spanish? Would you use the same model or would you have to cha change the model because of the, the language? Well, unfortunately, uh, you have to train your chatbot in the language that it's supposed to be, uh, be able to to speak in. Uh, for example, if you have a Spanish, uh, you know, if you have a Spanish market, you need a chatbot to speak Spanish, you have to train with the Spanish data. So it could be trained with the same design, the architecture of the model, but it needs to be trained specifically for Spanish. And uh, actually for some of the, the model that I mentioned, for example, Spacey, it, it's actually support uh, multiple languages. So, um, yeah, so actually using some, some of these like pre trained model actually can deal with other languages. Uh, of course, still, you know, the most popular one is English. But uh, now I think uh, people see the, the, the need of uh, expanding to other different languages as well. Uh, there's actually a tokenizer in Chinese that I didn't know about until I chat to uh, one of my friends, uh, you know, uh, years ago. That was, like, oh, that's like, because people are now yet building tools uh, for, for different languages. So, which, which is cool, which is cool. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Uh, so I don't think anyone else has questions. Uh, cool. So well, thank you very much, Chuck. It was a great talk. Thank you. Now it's time for beer. Yeah, uh, I think we have a, do we have a break? <laughs> yes, we do have a break. So I okay. uh, give you three minutes. Run. <laughs> 